Linus Sebastian of Linus Tech Tips recently began daily driving Mac OS and shared some raw notes on the WAN show. My experience using the MacBook, actually pretty solid, as long as I use it as a MacBook. And the whole thing is really seamless, in theory. As a seasoned user that primarily daily drives a handful of Mac OS machines and multiple iOS devices, I'm going to weigh in on his critiques. Now I'm sure most of you out there are asking, who the hell is this guy and why the fuck should I care? First off, that's a rather rude sentiment and you really could have thought of that thought with a little more thoughtfulness. Secondly, I have been an iOS developer for about 15 years now and I'm a tech tinkerer by hobby. And a brief disclaimer, I'm not a fanboy, I don't like fanboys, and I won't fanboy for Apple. If you're here to see me tell Linus off or defend your favorite company, you're watching the wrong video. I'm focused on conveying a different perspective, a more technical perspective that came from Windows and still uses Windows for gaming and video editing, but for well over a decade has been embedded within the Apple ecosystem for his profession. These are raw notes. They're raw notes. Did you know that if you plug in an external display and leave this open, you cannot turn this off? The only way to turn it off is to close it and leave it docked. The computer will stay on, and you don't have to configure anything for that behavior, but your only options are mirror and extend. Hmm. You can't just be like, no. Weird. Be off now. Back in my day, I remember when I first started using a Mac. Closing the lid would put the computer to sleep no matter what. There was no option to keep it from sleeping without additional software. Third-party software like Insomniacs would be required in order to keep the computer on. A step in the right direction was taken here, but I think what happened was Insomniacs was Sherlocked and any further configurability wasn't bothered with. So Luke, go ahead and like scroll this document, you know, in a way that you would, you know, two fingers on the trackpad, you know, like you would. Okay, that feels right, right? Okay, so that is Apple's natural scrolling, right? So where up is down and down is up, like it was a touchscreen. Okay. Uh, if you plug in a mouse, it's the same. Down is up and up is down on the scroll wheel, which no is not Ugh. how that's ever worked in the history of anything other yeah. than on Apple's like touch mice. Okay. You can change that. Okay. You can change it from natural to not natural. But <laughs> if you change the toggle for your mouse, it changes it for your touchpad. And if you change it for your touchpad, it changes it for your mouse. Oh, my God, why? W. Calderini says Apple really, really, really wants you to use the Apple mouse. And that's nice. And if they want that, then they should build a mouse that doesn't destroy my wrist. That's not an option for me. I literally will not. Or you need to like help this turtle in, in order to charge it. Because you <laughs> still have to do that, don't you? Yes. <laughs> I, too, disagree with that user sentiment. Have you seen the laughable design? I'd instead say they're more keen about adoption of their trackpad. Gestures simply do a lot more than Mac OS. Having the top of the mouse be a trackpad is god awful. I have tried using it and it immediately frustrates me as whenever I reposition or adjust my fingers on top of the mouse, it gets interpreted as a scroll or some other kind of gesture. Repeat rate is so slow for keys like backspace. Oh my god, I need third party software. Uh, <laughs> dude, holding down the backspace is infuriating i am like i am literally like dying as i wait for the cursor to nom up you all the characters it? that i've typed uh, it looks like i need third-party software for that i personally regularly switch between mac os and windows these days and really haven't noticed a difference in this aspect out of curiosity i tested the repeat rate on each os by first ensuring the key repeat rate was maxed out on both systems and then used the same google document and found the speed of deletion to be the same this makes me think something funky might be up with Linus's settings. I can't help but be curious about what he's seeing on his end and with what settings. Also, I'm going to assume Linus complaining about holding down the backspace, not gobbling up characters, fast enough frustrated him because this is the primary way he deletes multiple words. I find it a little funny that he's a writer that doesn't know that a much more productive way to delete multiple words is to hold down the control key with the backspace for a per word deletion. Option on Mac or that holding down control with the arrow keys allows you to skip on a per word basis and how it even works to jump between paragraphs when moving up or down. Come on, man. How can you or anyone else call you a professional writer if you don't even know that? You're not a writer, you're some kind of freaking vision guy. 
Calm the fuck down. Apple, I am genuinely offering to come in and work for you guys for a week as a consultant. I will give you a to-do list of just sensible ass fixes that you guys can make to macOS that will genuinely improve the experience of your product. I will do it for free. I really think Apple should take Linus up on this. Having a passionate outsider's perspective would be valuable if Apple values improving usability and user experience. But annoying a couple of Apple employees, it feels like many employees there drink the cult Kool-Aid. So it's doubtful on whether this will become a reality. Or that your staff doesn't care or people are just so used to these stupid workarounds that they just, they don't see them anymore. I don't know what it is. Disk management is terrible. I mean, disk management is kind of terrible on Windows as well, but I had a Linux formatted USB drive. And I basically put it in and it like read all the files and everything, but I couldn't copy anything to it. I couldn't erase it. I couldn't reformat it. Linus didn't provide enough details here for me to do a deep dive on this. Interestingly enough, Macs by default can only read NTFS drives. Writing to an NTS drive can be enabled via terminal incantation, but that's disabled by default because Apple doesn't consider that functionality properly vetted enough to enable by default. There is a much higher risk of causing corruption when writing to a non-native file system. Annoying, I know. This is why I personally tend to format any detachable media I need to write across all platforms with XFAT, not NTFS. Like, Can you not close that? Yeah, this is amazing. Okay, <laughs> I was welcome just looking to like, Apple how do you Music. Close it? <laughs> so they have closed this thing, you know, interface. Sometimes the red button just like goes away and you need to use the, the top bar. If you want to have your logic for doing things, there needs to be consistency. You saw that. It literally had the stoplights, but the red one was grayed out. out the red one. Fucking why? Thanks for asking. This component is using a design principle of Apple's known as modality, which is a design technique that presents content in a separate, dedicated mode that prevents interaction with the parent view and requires an explicit action to dismiss. You can think of modal views as child windows within the app that prevent actions in the parent view. They take away focus from the parent view until dealt with. Modals are a passive way for the app to call attention to something that needs to be addressed by the user before proceeding. The reason Linus encountered this modal is because he seemingly inadvertently clicked on the music app from the dock at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> Apple fanboys be like, get good, noob, and what are you doing, boomer? But I'll let Linus address you guys himself. Calm the fuck down. When Linus inadvertently clicked on the music app, the music app launched for the first time. Now, something that is common for apps to do, even on mobile platforms, is to display some kind of disclaimer about information that is being harvested or gathered and why. A very common way to do this is via a modal view that has information on it and a single button that tracks user acknowledgement and dismisses the modal. Right, you say, but why the hell does that prevent me from closing the parent window via the red circle? Tripping. Well, this takes me to another distinct behavior of macOS, applications not being tied to windows. The music app, for instance, can be playing music and have its window closed, leaving the song playing uninterrupted with a windowless music app running in the background. The implementation of modal views is such that the parent window is not interactable, or in this case, closable, until the modal view is dismissed. This coincides with the modal design paradigm, which takes focus away from the parent view until dealt with. However, it is permissible to minimize, full screen, move, or resize, but not to close the window that the modal view is in, as these actions don't attempt to bypass the modal view. I suspect the reason for implementing it this way is to guard against cases where the parent view may be closed while displaying the modal view. In that case, window state determining if the modal view had been dismissed or shown would need to be persisted at the app level instead of at the window level to ensure that a new window didn't appear without the modal showing up, but only if the user hadn't dismissed the modal first. Put simply, this adds complexity. This may seem like a trivial change, but it's important to consider this paradigm exists for all sorts of apps within the Mac ecosystem. Document apps, video editing apps, calendar apps, the three Mac games in existence. This kind of change would mandate that modal state be held at the app level instead of tied to the window that it is dependent upon. And in short, programmatically, keeping the state tied to the window is far cleaner from a maintainability point of view, especially because the modal view is view-based. It can't exist without a parent window. For instance, document apps will have different documents in separate windows. 
but each make use of modal views when saving a document. Disabling the red close button makes sense in this situation as you wouldn't want the document you have yet to save be inadvertently closed without first saving it. In this case, it prevents the user from taking a destructive action, which I see as beneficial. While another option, open document, opens up within its own window, not a modal tied to any parent window, so it's effectively occurring at the app level. I think this gripe Linus has can ultimately be rectified without too much effort, like doing what the Pages app does when launching for the first time. Not display a modal view and instead show a window without the traffic lights at all until the user clicks the call to action to dismiss that window. If you want to have your logic for doing things, fine. There needs to be consistency. Inconsistent design is bad design. I agree with Linus's sentiment that inconsistency is bad design and leads to a poor user experience. For instance, if I close all windows in the Pages app, it stays open. But as soon as I switch to another app, it quits itself. This behavior is by no means consistent across macOS. So Linus does have a point. It seems like different apps have different behaviors depending on the team that coded them up. And it seems that there's no mandated uniformity asserted across the macOS platform. The fact of the matter is that there are a great many deficiencies throughout macOS that frustrate the heck out of me, but the same can be said for any operating system. I am genuinely really glad Linus has brought this up for discussion and has been so damn Touch passionate screens. about it. I know I sure as heck feel the same way Linus does at times, but have just grown used to getting used to things and accept it as the Apple way. I hope the community begins encouraging constructive criticism as this is the only way we can let the Apple overlords know what we desire. Just recently, they have really dropped the ball with regards to stability in iOS 18 and they need to be called out for it, not defended. Likewise, here on macOS, if there is friction or pain points, a good product owner or manager at Apple would want to hear about it so that they can better understand the user perspective and even consider making improvements. What a crazy idea. If you've watched till here, maybe consider following me if you like what you see. It's a new channel and it covers a lot of ground, especially these days as I'm still experimenting a bit. If you would like to see more, please let me know in a comment down below. Thanks for watching and see you later. Damn it.